From the ages past, Allah sent his messengers to deliver humankind from darkness to light. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preachings and argue with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. That's also the ongoing mission of Islamic Research Foundation or IRF, spreading the truth of Allah's final message to mankind. Founded in 1991, IRF today offers some of the best services and facilities in the world for presenting an understanding of Islam in an objective and scientific way. Its programs are primarily focused on correcting misconceptions and promoting understanding of Islam. IRF also imparts Dawa training to Dais to aptly convey the message of Islam. IRF has one of the most modern studios producing programs presenting Islam, which are beamed regularly on many international TV channels in over 150 countries. Dr. Zakir Naik, President of IRF, reaching out across countries worldwide, from America to Europe to Africa to Asia to Australia, strives to clarify Islamic viewpoints. He dispels the many media myths and anti-Islamic prejudices propagated the world over by anti-Islamic forces. Dr. Zakir Naik is a medical doctor. He is acclaimed the world over for his spontaneous and convincing replies to questions posed by critics and skeptics during the question and answer sessions after his talks. He is also renowned for his verbatim quotes with references from major religious scriptures of the world. Dr. Zakir and other faculty of the IRF train many Dais in effective Dawa techniques. IRF's website provides free Dawa training material for you to download and become an effective Dai yourself. Dr. Zakir Naik's talks are available on audio and video, cassettes, CDs and DVDs the world over. IRF today is creating a change in the hearts and minds of millions of Muslims and non-Muslims worldwide towards a proper understanding and respect for Islam. Have a question or doubt about Islam and its teachings? Now you know, one of the best resource centers to get convincing answers from is Islamic Research Foundation. 5658 Tandil Street, North Dongri, Mumbai, 400009, India. Phone 2373-6875. Fax 9122-2373-0689. Email islam at the rate of irf.net. For more information, log on to our website www.irf.net. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We begin today's program with the Karat, the recitation from the Holy Quran by Brother Ashraf Muhammadi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم تنزيل الكتاب لا ريب فيه من رب بالعالمين أم يقولون افتراه بل هو الحق من ربك لتنظر 
تنذر قوما ما أطاهم من نذير من قبلك لعلهم يهتدون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم إن في السماوات والأرض رآيات للمؤمنين وفي خلقكم وما يبث من دابة آيات لقوم يوقنون واختلاف الليل والنهار وما أنزل الله من السماء من رزق من السماء من رزق فأحيا به الأرض بعد موتها وتصريف الرياح آيات لقوم يعقلون تلك آيات الله نتلوها عليك بالحق فبأي حديث بعد الله وآياته يؤمنون صدق الله العظيم. The translation Surah Sajda, chapter 32, verses 1 to 3. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan, the accursed, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Alif Lam Meem. This is the revelation of the book in which there is no doubt from the Lord of the worlds. Or do they say he has forged it? Nay, it is the truth from your Lord, that you may admonish a people to whom no warner has come before you, in order that they may receive guidance. Surah Jatiya, chapter 45, verses 1 to 6. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Hamim, the revelation of the book is from Allah the exalted in power, full of wisdom. Verily, in the heavens and the earth are signs for those who believe. And in the creation of yourselves and the fact that animals are scattered through the earth are signs for those of assured faith. And in the alternation of night and day and the fact that Allah sends down sustenance from the sky and revives therewith the earth after its death and in the change of winds are signs for those that are wise. Such are the signs of Allah which we rehearse to you in truth. Then in what exposition will they believe after rejecting Allah and his signs? Verily, Allah speaks the truth. Our chief guest for the day, Mr. Rafiq Dada, the distinguished guests of honor, respected elders, our special guests who have come from other cities of India today, as well as those who have come from abroad, 
brothers and sisters i dr mohammed naik welcome all of you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum may peace be on you i am your host and coordinator for today's program organized by the islamic research foundation the islamic research foundation a registered public trust was established in february 1991 and has been striving since then for the proper presentation understanding and clarification of islam as well as removing misconceptions about islam amongst muslims as well as non muslims along with the real faith reason logic and modern scientific understanding form the basis of all our presentations and discussions on islam the irf has more than 1600 video cassette titles collection on islam available on free hire it also has more than 4500 audio cassette titles on islam we have more than 55 irf publications in english on islam which are distributed free on request mashallah we have lately been receiving excellent response from the cable television operators in bombay and the viewers for our video cassettes in addition the irf also has many ongoing charitable educational and other aid programs you may wonder why have a talk on is the quran god's word today as you would know islam in its resurgence continues to shape events around the globe having contemporary relevance its main constitutional book of guidance is the holy quran it is the basic unifying and transformational source for muslims and lately the quran has been more subjected to mischievous misquotations criticisms based on half truths and out of context remarks as well as illogical and unscientific false allegations by ill informed or biased persons in the west as well as in india therefore the islamic research foundation has thought it fit to hold this public talk today on is the quran god's word by dr zakir naik our objective is to critically analyze the topic as well as keep it open to question in public at the end we leave it to you o oh, members of the audience to judge right from wrong our chief guest for today mr rafiq dada is an eminent authority on constitutional law and a leading senior advocate in india in 1966 he stood second in the llm exams of the university of bombay he was designated as senior advocate in 1987 he regularly appears in cases in the high court and the supreme court of india a thorough gentleman with dynamic knowledge of contemporary human affairs and motivations mr dada is the vice president of the bombay bar association in november 1994 the government of india has honored him with an appointment as the additional solicitor general of india may i present to the august audience present here mr rafiq dada assalamu alaikum dr mohammed naik the speaker of the day dr zakir naik distinguished members of the audience ladies and gentlemen i stand before you in all humility for i am but very small 
in this great hall of knowledge. But small as I am, I am reminded of that little story of a fisherman who went when early morning before the sun came out. When he cast his net, he found a load. And when he checked it up in the darkness, he found that there were little pieces of stone. So he lamented his faith and he started throwing stone after stone into the water. But when he was about to cast the last few stones, the sun came out in all his glory. And suddenly he saw that what he was throwing away into the sea was not a stone, but was a precious pearl. Therefore, in the darkness of ignorance, he was casting away pearls, thinking that it was stone. It was only in the light that he ultimately saw reality. And then he lamented his faith that all the darkness which had gone by in the previous time had been wasted and he had given away something so precious. As far as the world of Muslims is concerned, the light shone bright 1400 years back when the Holy Quran was revealed to the world. It is an article of faith with every Muslim that the Holy Quran is the word of God. There is no debate possible on the subject. This is the article, it is axiomatic, it is the article of faith for every Muslim. Not only is this an article of faith, but it is the belief of Muslims that religion has been perfected with the Holy Quran. And in the Holy Quran it has been mentioned that this religion will be protected and preserved by the Almighty. In fact, such is the miracle of the Holy Quran that right from the time of the Holy Prophet, hundreds and thousands and now millions and maybe crores of people have committed it to memory. So that not only is it inscribed in beautiful paper, but it is enshrined in the hearts and minds of men so that it can never ever be erased. And it always remains in its authentic purity. It is a matter of pleasure and pride for me, and as I said in all humility, that you have considered me fit to stand before you and say all this. I say that it is necessary to meet and talk about all this, because we are living at a time which the scientists have called the age of calculators and Philistines. Science has been used to denigrate religion and therefore it is necessary to reiterate some of the verses of the Holy Quran which point out to the scientific base which we, one finds in it. Dr. Maurice Bouquel is from the French Academy of Science. On 14th of June 1978, he addressed a big gathering in London. His subject was the Holy Quran in modern science. He referred to various verses from the Holy Quran and he established with great conviction that what was mentioned 1400 years back has now been found by science. For instance, he mentioned that the Holy Quran mentioned the fact that God Almighty, Allah Almighty had created the day and the night, the sun and the moon, each moving in its own orbit with its own motion. This was revealed at a time when the major part of the world, or perhaps all the world, believed that the world was flat and anyone who had the courage to talk about anything to the contrary was either slaughtered or executed or was told that he was a heretic. Likewise, it has been mentioned that with the power of Allah, if human beings can penetrate the heavens and the earth, they shall do it. This was also mentioned at a time when the world perhaps did not even know a bullock cart. And the question of going into the heaven 
was nothing but a distant dream. All this was revealed 1400 years back and Dr. Maurice Bukel pointed this out in the seminar in London. It is difficult to comprehend the great subject that is going to be talked about today. But we have a very distinguished speaker, Dr. Zakir Naik. Most people are familiar with his speech and with his great knowledge. Dr. Zakir Naik, as you all know, in a short span of 30 years, has delivered innumerable discourses on various religious subjects. He has spoken to audiences, many and hundreds of audiences in the country, and also audiences abroad, like in South Africa. He has visited various parts of the world, the UK, the USA, Germany, France, Switzerland, and various other parts of the Middle East and Far East. In fact, one of the great thinkers of recent times, Dr. Ahmed Didat, with great pleasure called Dr. Naik, Didat Plus. So we have Didat Plus before us, and we have this vast subject. I pray to the Almighty that we have the strength, we have the humility, and that he may shower us with his blessings and his glory. Thank you very much. Uh, for the seating committee and the reception committee, I would kindly request you to adjust the younger people on the stage so we could uh, be more respectful for the elders and provide them seats. We know it is a little congested, a little difficult, but if we can cooperate, we can make a very good program going. Now we have the main talk of the day is the Quran, God's Word by Dr. Zakir Naik. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Afalai tada barun al-Qur'ana. Walau kana min indi gari Allah. La wajadu fi ikhtilafan kasira. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sanurihim ayatina fi lafaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana lahum anna wal haq awalam yakfi bi rabbika annahu ala kulli shay'in shaheed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul ugdata min lisani yafkahu kawli. Respected guest of honor, Mr. Rafiq Dada, the distinguished guests of honor, the learned scholars, the respected elders, and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace, blessings, and mercy of Almighty Allah be on all of you. The topic of this morning's talk is, is the Quran God's word? Many people have a misconception that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was the founder of the religion of Islam. In fact, Islam is in existence since man first set foot on the earth. God Almighty has sent several revelations and messengers to this earth. All the previous prophets sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were meant only for their people and their nation. And the complete message was meant for a particular time period. That's the reason. That's the miracle they performed, like the parting of the sea, like raising the dead to alive, convinced the people of that time, but cannot be examined and verified by us today. Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger of God Almighty 
sent to the whole of humanity. And his message is meant till eternity. The Quran mentions in Surah Al Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 110. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent not thee, but as a mercy to the whole humankind, as a mercy to all the worlds. Since Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger, and his message was everlasting, that's the reason the miracle given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should also be everlasting and examinable by us at all the times. Though Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, performed several miracles which are mentioned in the hadith, that is the traditions, he never emphasized them. Though we Muslims believe in all these miracles, we only boast of the ultimate miracle given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the Holy Quran. Al-Quran is the miracle of all times. It proved itself to be a miracle 1400 years ago. It can be reconfirmed today and forever. In short, it's the miracle of miracles. Probably the only point common amongst the people, whether they be Muslims or non-Muslims, is that the Quran was recited the first time by a man born in the city of Mecca in Arabia in the 6th century by the name Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Regarding the source of the Holy Quran, there can be basically three different assumptions. The first is that the Holy Quran, its author is Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, himself, consciously, subconsciously or unconsciously. The second assumption that can be is that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, he obtained it from other human sources or from other religious scriptures. And the third is that the Holy Quran does not have a human author, but it is verbatim, the word or the revelation of God Almighty. Let us examine today all the three basic assumptions. The first being that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was the author himself, consciously, subconsciously, or unconsciously. It is highly abnormal to challenge the testimony of a person who disclaims the responsibility of any great work, whether it be literally, whether it be scientific or otherwise. But this is exactly what the Orientalists do, who doubt the origin of the Quran when they say that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was the author. The Prophet never ever claimed that he was the author of the Quran. In fact, he always said that it was a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To think otherwise is illogical and would mean that he was telling a lie, God forbid. History tells us that never has the Prophet been ever reported of telling a lie till prophethood. That is till the age of 40. And all the people acclaimed him as a person who was honest, who was noble, who was chaste. No wonder they gave him the title Al-Amin, the trustworthy, friends and foes alike. Even those people 
who said that he was a liar, God forbid, after he claimed prophethood. Even then, they kept their valuables with him for safekeeping. Then why should an honest person lie and say that the Quran is the word of God and that he was a prophet? Let's examine the claims made by these Orientalists. Some say that Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him. He attributed the Quran and said he was a prophet for material gains, for worldly benefits. I do agree. There are several people who falsely claim to be prophets, saints and preachers for wealth. And they acquire riches and lead a luxurious life. We have several throughout the world, especially in our country, India. Prophet Muhammad was financially better off before than after prophethood. He had married a rich businesswoman by the name of Khatija. May Allah be pleased with her at the age of 25, 15 years before prophethood. And his life, after he claimed that he was a prophet, was unenviable. According to the collection of Hadith by an nawi in Riyadh Salihin, Hadith number 482, it says that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, who was the wife of beloved prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, said that there were times when one or two months would pass without having fire being lit in the house because they did not have any cooked food. They survived on water and dates and sometimes supplemented by the goat milk given by the people of Medina. <clears throat> this was not just a temporary phase, it was a way of life for the Prophet. According to Riyadh Salihin, Hadith number 465 and 466, Hazrat Bilal, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that whenever the Prophet received gifts and provisions for the future, he gave it to the poor and the needy and never kept it back for himself. Then why should you doubt that the Prophet told a lie, Nauz Billah, for material gains? And there is a verse in the Quran which negates this theory. It is from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 79, which says, then woe to those who write the book with their own hands. Summa yakuluna haza And then say, this is from Allah. To traffic with it for a miserable price. Then woe to those for what their hands do write. Then woe to those for what they earn. This was is talking about the people who wrote the book with their own hands and said it's from God Almighty or they changed the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were every possibility that if Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him, himself would have written the Quran and attributed it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some point of his life, he would have been exposed. Then he would be called as the biggest hypocrite and would be cursing himself in his own book. Some people say that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, attributed the Quran to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and called him, himself a prophet for status, for power, for glory, for leadership. What are the qualities of a person who wants power, status, leadership and glory? He wears fancy clothes, he eats very good food, he lives in mansions, in monumental buildings, he has guards, etc. 
our beloved prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him he milked his own goat he mended his own clothes he repaired his own shoes he even many a times did the household work he was an amazing model of simplicity and humbleness he sat on the floor he went to shop in the market without any guards even when the poor people used to invite him he used to dine with them and eat graciously whatever was given to him so much so that that his detractors it mentioned the quran in surah tauba chapter number 9 verse number 61 said oh he listens to everybody what kind of a person is this he listens to every tom dick and harry once when a representative of the pagan arabs by the name of udba he came to the prophet and said if you give us this claim of prophethood we will give you all the wealth in arabia we will make you the leader of arabia and crown you the king only thing that we want is that you should give up this message that there is only one god and the prophet refused by the revelation of the quran from surah fusilat chapter number 41 there were several attempts made once through his uncle abu talib that you give up your message and we will make you the wealthiest man in arabia the prophet said oh my uncle even if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left i will not give up this mission until i die why should a person lead a life of such suffering and sacrifices when he was triumphant even with his adversaries and he was so humble and noble that at all the times of victory he always said it is due to the help of allah subhanahu wa taala and not my own genius some of the orientalist they come up with a new theory that the prophet he was suffering from mythomania god forbid mythomania is a mental disorder in which a person tells a lie and he believes in it so they said that prophet muhammad may peace be upon him told a lie nauz billah and he believed in it if a psychiatrist has to treat a mythomaniac he will pose him with facts because these people can't face facts suppose a person says i am the king of england the psychiatrist will not tell him that he's crazy he's mad he will say okay if you are the king of england where is your queen he will say she is gone to my mother in law's place where is the minister he has died where are the guards the moment to keep on posing facts finally the mythomaniac will say i think i'm not the king of england the quran does the same quran poses the people with facts and questions in fact it is not prophet muhammad may peace be upon him who was a mythomaniac it is these people who are actually mythomaniacs because they say that the prophet lied and they believe in it and quran treats such people by posing facts by posing questions if you doubt if you think that the quran has been forged do so and so so and so thing if you think that quran is not from allah subhanahu wa taala what about this it poses several questions which we will be dealing with inshallah during the course of the talk some have come up with a theory called the religious illusion theory or the subconscious theory in which the prophet they say nauz billah used to 
from a subconscious mind he derived the quran unknowingly and some of them said he was crazy god forbid let's analyze their claim a person if is suffering from this disease or if he's crazy they fail to realize that the quran was revealed during a course of time which was 23 years the quran was not revealed at one time it was revealed over a period of 23 years in stages part by part if this quran as they claim is from a mind which is subconscious or a crazy mind it could not have been so consistent and neither can a person be under the false impression that he is the prophet when everything is coming from a subconscious mind for a period of 23 years there are several facts in the quran which can disprove this for example quran mentions about several historical events which no one at the time of the prophet knew there are several prophecies which are mentioned which have been fulfilled there are several scientific facts which were unknown that time and has been confirmed today it is impossible for these sort of facts to come out from a subconscious mind or a crazy mind and the quran testifies in surah araf chapter number 7 verse number 184 do they not reflect that their companion is not one possessed with evil but he is a perpetuous warner the quran repeats in surah al-qalam chapter number 68 verse number 2 thou is not by the grace of thy lord crazy or possessed it is said in surah taqweer chapter number 81 verse number 22 your companion is not possessed and mad so why should a person lie it's not possible to discuss all the various theories put forward by them if anyone has any new theory they are most welcome to put it during question answer time and inshallah i'll try my level best to clarify it the second assumption is that the prophet copied it from other religious scriptures or he got it from some human source one historical fact is sufficient to prove this theory wrong that is our beloved prophet muhammad may peace be upon him he was an illiterate and quran testifies in surah ankabut chapter number 29 verse number 48 that thou was not able to recite any book before this book was revealed nor was thou able to transcribe it before this in that case indeed the talkers of vanities would have doubted allah subhanahu wa taala knew that people would doubt the source of the quran that's the reason that in his divine wisdom he chose his last and final messenger prophet muhammad may peace be upon him to be an ummi an illiterate and unlettered prophet otherwise surely the talkers of vanities the babblers in the marketplace would have something to say and if the prophet was literate the critics the cynics would have had some weight to say that the prophet copied it from somewhere else and rehashed it in a new form nauz billah but even this claim is denied a point hardly big enough to hang a fly and our qari brother shaf mohammadi he recited the verse of the quran from surah sajda chapter number 32 verse number 1 to 3 alif lam mim tanzilul kitab al arab fi mir rabbil alamin 
Alif, Lam, Mim. This is the revelation of the book, without doubt, from the Lord of the worlds. Do they say he has forged it? Nay, it is the truth from thy Lord. So that thou may admonish a people to whom no warner was sent before, so that they may receive some guidance. The Quran is unlike any other religious scriptures which has a typical human type of narration like a storybook. How does the storybook begin? It begins with once upon a time, foxes and grapes, wolf and the lamb. Similarly, if you read other scriptures, it says in the beginning was God, he made the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the word, it may say now it came to pass as though so it happened. The Quran does not have such human narrations in the beginning was so and so. And if you read the other religious scriptures, they have a typical sequence of the human narration. It talks about a particular person, it talks about his family, about the children, and the sequence runs in order. Chapter 1, chapter 2, it's in order. Quran too speaks about people and the family life, but it speaks not in a particular sequence like the human story book. The Quran has its own unique style. It's a unique book. The people who cannot prove that Quran is a work of a human being, then they finally come up and say that the Quran is a deception. Nauzubillah. If you ask them, where is the deception? They will not be able to point out a single deception in the whole Quran. People, they believe in things for which they have got no proof or reasons. And they fool themselves by sticking to it. For example, if I believe that this particular man, he is my enemy, for which I have got no proof, for which I have got no reason. But the moment that man comes in front of me, because of my false belief, I start behaving like his enemy. He reacts and too behaves like my enemy. And then I satisfy myself. See, I was right. This man is my enemy. Because he's behaving like my enemy. If it had not been for my initial false belief, that man would have never behaved like my enemy. So people, believe in things without proof and reason and fool themselves by sticking to it. Quran says that the revelation goes in parallel with reason. Some people say that holy scriptures, they are beyond reasoning. If they are beyond reasoning, then how can we decipher which of the holy scriptures are true and which are false? The Quran, in fact, encourages reasoning. It encourages discussion. Many Muslims feel that you should avoid religious discussions. You should avoid getting into a dialogue where religion is concerned. And they are sadly mistaken. The Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, ila hikma, wal al hasna, waja ahsan. That is, invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Quran encourages discussion, encourages reasoning. No wonder the Arabic word Kalu, which means they say, is mentioned 332 times. And the Arabic word Kul, which means say, is also mentioned 332 times. This proves 
that the Quran encourages discussion. There is a theory known as exhausting the alternatives. The Quran says that this book, this book, the Quran, it is a revelation from God Almighty. If it is not, then what is it? You give the other alternatives. Some may say, it's the handiwork of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. It has been disproved. Some may say he lied for material gains. Laus billah. That has been disproved. Whatever claims you have got, put forth and see whether they stand the test. This is a Quran. It's a book. It's paper and ink. Where did it come from? It requires an explanation. The Quran says it's from Allah. It's from God Almighty. If it's not, where did it come from? In Surah Jashia, chapter number 45, verse number 1 and 2, which says, Ha Meem, Tanzilu Kitab, Min Allahi Aziz al Hakim. Ha Meem. This is the revelation of the book. From Allah, the exalted in power, full of wisdom. And Quran mentioned in several places that this is a revelation from God Almighty. It's mentioned in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 19. In Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 92. In Surah Yusuf, chapter number 12, verse number 1 and 2. In Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 113. In Surah Namal, chapter number 27, verse number 6. It's mentioned in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32. Verse number 1 to 3. It's mentioned in Surah Yasin, chapter number 36. Verse number 1 to 3. In Surah Al Zumur, chapter number 39. Verse number 1. In Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40. Verse number 2. It's mentioned in Surah Jasha, chapter number 45. Verse number 2. It is mentioned in Surah Rahman, chapter number 55. Verse number 2. It's mentioned in Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56. Verse number 77 and 80. It's mentioned in several places. It's mentioned in Surah Insan, chapter number 76. Verse number 23. In several places, the Quran says, this is a revelation from God Almighty. If it is not, what is it? The scientific community, they have a different approach. If anyone has a new theory, they say, we don't have time to listen. And they have a reason for that. They say that if you have a new theory, don't bring it to me unless you have a way, unless you have a test to prove your theory wrong. Unless you don't have a way or a test to prove your theory wrong, I don't have time to waste with you. It's called as the falsification test. That's the reason that Albert Einstein, in the beginning of the century, when he gave a new theory that I feel that the universe works like that. Along with that theory, he gave three falsification tests, saying that if you think my theory is wrong, do these three things and my theory will be proved wrong. The scientists, they examined it for six years and then said, yes, the theory of Albert Einstein is correct. That does not mean that he's a great person. It means he deserves a listening. Quran has several such falsification tests. When you get into a discussion in future with anyone regarding religion, you have to ask him that do you have a way to prove your religion wrong? Believe me, I have not come across any person who has told me that I have a way to prove my religion wrong. The Quran has. The Quran has several falsification tests. Some of them were only meant for the past. Some of them are applicable for all times. Let me give you a few examples. The Prophet had an uncle by the name of Abu Lahab. He was the staunchest opponent of the Prophet. Whenever 
the prophet spoke to any stranger he is to follow the prophet the moment the prophet departed he is to go to the stranger and ask what did the prophet tell you did he say it is day it's night did he say it's black it's white he spoke exactly of what the prophet said and there is a full chapter surah lahab chapter number 111 of the quran which was revealed and it says that abu lahab and his wife they will perish in hell and it says indirectly that these people will never accept islam they will never become muslims this surah was revealed 10 years before the death of abu lahab in that span of time many of his friends who were also opponents of islam embraced islam but abu lahab did not embrace islam since he used to lie always against the prophet the only thing he had to do to prove the quran wrong was to say i am a muslim he did not have to behave like a muslim he did not have to act like a muslim he only had to say i am a muslim and the quran would have been proved wrong it was so easy for him to prove the quran wrong since he lied before he just had to tell an additional lie it is as though the prophet is telling him you think i am your enemy come on say this say i am a muslim and i'll be proved wrong it was so easy but he did not say it this proves that no human being can make such a statement in his book it has to be a divine revelation and in such example is in surah al-baqara chapter number 2 verse number 94.95 which says that they say that the last home of allah is with them alone it is meant for them alone and no one else and the quran continues tell them that if the last home for allah is for them alone tell them to seek for death they will never seek for death because of the sins they have committed this was re- revealed during a discussion during a confrontation between the jews and the muslims and the jews said that the last home of allah that is the paradise is for the jews alone and not for anyone else so what was revealed saying that if you think that paradise is specially meant only for the jews you call for death seek for death and the quran says they will never seek for death the only thing the jews had to do at that time any one of them any one of those jew a single person would have come out and said i seek for death i want to die not that he had to die not that he had to act only thing he had to do was seek for death say i want to die and the quran would have been proved wrong it was so easy to prove the quran wrong but none of the jews came forward and said that i seek for death it's a falsification test but now you may tell me that all these tests of the past how can we prove the quran wrong today if you want to prove it wrong quran has tests falsification tests which are also meant for all time for that time and for today and till eternity the quran mentions that many people claimed and said that the quran is forged so quran tells them it's mentioned in surah isra chapter number 17 verse number 88 that say if all the human kind and jinns were to gather together to produce the like of the quran they will not be able to do it even if they help each other it's a challenge that if all the human kind and jinns gathered to produce the like of the quran they will not be able to do it even if they help each other the quran is acclaimed as the best arabic literature on the face of the earth by muslims and non muslims alike 
the Arabic language of the Quran. It is so clear, so meaningful, intelligible, unsurpassable, miraculous. It does not deviate away from truth, even though it rhymes, unlike other poetry and literature. It is the highest order of rhetoric throughout the revelation. The same verse of the Quran can convince even a common man as well as an intelligent person. It is a miraculous book. The same challenge that produce a recital like the Quran is given in Surah Tur, chapter number 52, verse number 34. Which later on, God Almighty. He made the test easy for the people in Surah Hud, chapter number 11, verse number 13, which says, Do they say he has forged it? Tell them, produce 10 such surahs forged and let them call for help anyone besides Allah if they speak the truth. And no one could produce 10 surahs exactly like the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further simplifies the test. And says in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 38, that do they say he has forged it? Say, produce one surah exactly forged like the Quran. One surah forged exactly like the Quran. And call to help anyone besides Allah if you speak the truth. And they could not do it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an easiest of easy of the test. The easiest falsification test in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 23 and 24, which says, Wa in kuntum fi mimma al -abdana. And if you are in doubt as what we have revealed to our servant from time to time, fatu bi suratim min misli. Then produce a surah somewhat similar to it. Wad u shwada and call forth your helpers and witnesses if there are any besides Allah in Kuntum Sadiqeen. If you speak the truth. Fa illam taf alu. But if you cannot, walan taf alu. And of a surety you cannot. Fatakun nara lati wakudu hanna sabila jara. Then fear the fire whose fuel shall be men and stones. Which is prepared for those who reject faith. First, the Quran gave a challenge. Produce a recite like the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simplified and said, produce 10 surahs like the Quran. Then, produce one surah. Here it says, produce one surah somewhat similar. Mim misli. The other places the Quran says, misli. Here it says, mim misli. Somewhat similar to the Quran and the non-Muslim Arabs they failed miserably 